In the previous session, we trained our first convolutional neural network to recognize handwritten digits. In this video, we'll train another model to recognize cats and dogs. We will learn how to handle large image sets using TF records and we'll also learn how to freeze TensorFlow models for deployment. I've made a few changes on the code that we have written in the previous session. First of all, I no longer use the Lenet inspired model that we built last time. I'm using MobileNet instead. The model is also now a separate file under this directory called nets. I also refactored the code a little bit. I turned our trainer into a class, for example, and moved the training parameters here. And added this random flip to the image preprocessing function for the purposes of data augmentation. A major change I made here is that the data layer now loads the data from chunks of TF records instead of loading the entire data set as one large data tensor. TF records are the recommended input format for TensorFlow. These records are binary files that contain protocol buffers called examples, which contain features such as bytes features for images and integer features for labels. I wrote this script for you to easily convert an image dataset into the TF records format. Okay, let's convert an image dataset into TF records. Python create TF records. We can use the help function to see what the arguments of the script is. The input directory is where we have our images. I have a folder named dataset which has two subfolders, cat and dog, each one of which has pictures of their corresponding animals. You can find a similar dataset on the web by doing a web search on cats and dogs dataset. The output there is where the TF records will be saved to, and the number of shards is the number of chunks that the entire dataset will be split into. And the split ratio is the ratio of the number of images in the training set to the total number of images. Alright, we're done, and here are our TF records under this TF records folder. Now we can train this model using our training script. The checkpoint path is where the checkpoints will be saved. In this version of code, I also write the tensorboard logs in the same folder. And the data path is the path to our newly created TF records. Okay, this is going to take some time, so I'll fast forward the video here. Okay, 91% accuracy is good enough. If you train it further, the accuracy might go up to 97%, but I'll cancel it right here. Now that we have a trained model, we can freeze it for deployment using this short script that I have written earlier. You can find all of these files on my GitHub profile. By the way, I'll put the links in the description. What this script does is that it converts the variables to constants and embeds them into the graph, then serializes the graph into a single protocol file that has everything we need to deploy a model. Now all we need to do is to provide the path where we saved our checkpoints and specify where the output file will be saved. Another advantage of frozen models is that they're easier to convert into other formats to support a variety of platforms. For example, Intel's OpenVINO toolkit provides a tool to convert frozen TensorFlow models into their native binary format. Qualcomm's Snapdragon Neural Processing Engine also provides a converter to convert a TensorFlow model into their binary format, which runs on mobile devices powered by their hardware. Now let's see how we can run inference on this frozen model. I have an example inference script here that I've written earlier. What this script does is that it reads and parses the frozen graph, then it runs it on all images in a given directory. You'll need OpenCV to run this script if you don't have it already. If you don't want to use OpenCV, that's fine. You can use another library to load the images as well. To run this script, we need to tell it where the frozen model is and point it to the directory that has our test images. I have two sample images here just to demonstrate how we can run inference on them. Let's run this and see what happens. Here we have it. The first one is a cat and the second one is a dog. Zero is the label we had for the cat's class, and one is the label for the dog's class. Alright, that's all for today. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more videos. And as always, thanks for watching, stay tuned, and see you next time.